Good morning. Now we all know the Genesis account that the earth was prepared in six days for human habitation and also that there was a global flood in the days of Noah. Now is there credible evidence that these things really happened? Because if it's not credible, we're going to destroy faith rather than build it up. Now I've had people write in to me and say that the universe and the earth were created in six of Earth's days. Someone else wrote in and said that each of the six creative days were 1,000 years long. Jehovah's Witnesses used to believe that the days were 7,000 years long each. That was a spin-off from the Seventh-day Adventists. I don't think they believe that anymore. So let's look at this and we'll start with the word day. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That has nothing to do with the six creative days which were used to prepare the earth, which was already here, for human habitation. In Genesis chapter 1 verses 3 to 5, we have two different meanings of the word day. God created light for the planet and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. Then there was an evening and there was a morning, the first day. So we have day meaning 12 hours roughly and then we have one of God's days. Now, in the book of Psalms, chapter 90, we read in verse 4, For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it's past, or as a watch in the night. So, a thousand of our years can seem like a day to God, or even less, it can seem like a watch in the night, which is just four hours. So we have no way of knowing exactly how long God's days are. We don't want to go back to the days of Galileo when religious people insisted that the earth was the centre of the universe. We mustn't limit our powerful creator by our perspective. The credible evidence demonstrates that God's days are are many millions of years long each and they don't all have to be of the same age. As we read in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 4, all of God's creative works are put under the heading of one day, one epoch, one era. Now concerning the flood of Noah's day, I need to look into the great unconformity which fundamentalists claim was caused by the flood of Noah's day. The great unconformity can be seen in the Grand Canyon in the US. It's an area of very ancient rock covered by relatively new rock on top with thousands of years of geological evidence missing, washed away. And it's claimed that Noah's flood did this, despite the fact that there are deep layers of limestone on top of the great unconformity. Limestone takes millions of years to form. We need to look carefully at the Genesis account. In chapter 1 and verse 2, it explains that the earth was covered in water. And geologists will agree that the earth was covered at one time in shallow seas. Now, if we look at the third day of creation, which is verses 9 to 13 of chapter 1, we note that the Lord says, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let dry land appear. Now, this would not have been a gentle transition from the earth being covered into water, by water, sorry, and dry land appearing. It would have been catastrophic, with mountains rising as the continents either pulled apart or crashed into each other. The waters would have rushed off into the newly formed valleys. And this is far more fitting for the great unconformity than the flood of Noah's day. 
evolutionary scientists are puzzled by the explosion of life in the fossil record in the Cambrian era of roughly 500 million years ago. But it's very simple. According to Genesis, dry land appeared, so you could now have trees, vegetation, you had deeper seas, so you could have large sea monsters, you could have birds, because they had somewhere to live and somewhere to eat, and eventually you could have land animals and humans. It had to be created, of course. The Genesis account is extremely accurate when compared with the myths that you have in other cultures of the earth being on the back of elephants or on the shoulders of a giant atlas. It's highly accurate. We can have full confidence in it. I do believe in the flood of Noah's day and there is evidence for it in the frozen north with the mammoths being frozen quickly as the flood waters dispersed and it would have created a very cooling effect on the earth. But our faith does not based on those sort of things. We know that these things are true because Jesus believed them. We can take warning from them and we can have full assurance in the record that God has given us in the scriptures.